Hi readers, it's Lori. Welcome back to my channel, Book Sync and Paper. I'm happy that you're here today. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. And I hope that you will take a moment to subscribe if you like this video today. And hopefully you like some of my other content as well. I'm noticing that it is time to have a conversation about books and life, chatting, just telling you about kind of what's happening and also updating you on the no buy book challenge. So let's, I guess, start with that. <laughs> this past weekend was my library's book sale. Well, one of my libraries had a book sale where we used to live. And I used to be on that library foundation. And this was an event that the library, library foundation put on every year to just raise some money for other books and things for the library itself. And they're, you know, $2 hardbacks, dollar paperbacks, 50 cent, whatever, you know, just lots of good stuff. When I decided to go on the no buy challenge, I wasn't fully aware, or if I was, I ignored it. Maybe I don't remember ignoring it, but I wasn't aware that the library sale was going to be this summer. I saw it the other day. I started to see photos of the stacks and stacks and stacks of books that they were lining up on all of the tables. And I started to share it for the library, obviously. And I started to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm missing out on one of my favorite events of the entire year. So I had a conversation with my partner about it and about how I was really sad that I had not taken this into account. And she said, well, you have a couple of choices. You can choose to buy some books. If you want to go to the library book sale, you could ask somebody to buy some books for you, <laughs> or you could choose to not go and not buy any books. So the choice I made was to not go and not buy any books. And it was hard, I have to say. I even went out that way to get my hair cut. So I was really, really close to the library book sale and I didn't go, I didn't go. I'm still feeling a little, um, a certain way about it. I am feeling like, on one hand, I'm feeling very proud of myself because I have exactly one month to go from the day I'm filming this. On the other hand, I'm feeling like, seriously, I just want to start buying some books. I have Book of the Month Club credit stacking up. I have Libro.fm credit stacking up. I have, you know, I'm about to research anticipated reads for August. I already know some of the uh, books that are coming out in August. I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm really struggling a little bit more right now than I have this whole time. So I just wanted to come on and say that <laughs> this has not been easy peasy the entire time so far. And I do understand that I have the choice to break the challenge or to, you know, do whatever, but I'm, I'm not going to do it as of today anyway. And the library book sale is over. So that temptation is gone, <laughs> but I I really struggled this weekend. I thought about going more than once. We also had back to school Palooza for the middle granddaughter this weekend. We try to take them separately sometimes if we can, just because it's more of a special event for them. So this was Adeline's. You've met Adeline if you've been a viewer of my channel for a while. She did a video with me. It was Adeline's time this weekend. So we had an overnight. We went to a movie. We went school supply shopping. We had lunch out at the place she likes. And so we had lots of great time with her. We played games. We, she painted, we watched a movie here at home. We watched if, if you haven't seen if, by the way, with uh, John Krasinski, who also wrote and produced it, it is an incredible, incredible movie. And I highly recommend it for adults as well as for children. And then we went to see Despicable Me 4 at the theater <laughs> And we also loved that one as well. In fact, it might, I don't know. I mean, that one, 
That one is really, I laughed out loud more than once in the theater. So I really, really have to say that is one of my favorite. And then we have um, her older sister to take out for her back to school Palooza and our youngest grandson who doesn't have a list yet. So we're not going to be able to prioritize him until he gets a list from his daycare. He will, this is his last year in daycare. So uh, he will be in kindergarten next school year, but yeah, he's already, he's writing very well. He's reading words. He's, he's doing really incredible stuff already. So we're very, very happy for him, but we enjoy those days. There, there are a lot of going places and a lot of doing things, but we enjoy those weekends very, very much with them. That is my status for the no buy challenge. And I guess how I kept myself uh, preoccupied by going, <laughs> by spending that time with my granddaughter, that probably helped. I don't know if I would have not gone had she not been here. I really don't. And I even thought about, well, I could use her as an excuse and take her because they have children's books. No, didn't do it. Uh, her father, my son, came and started working on book case number two. We made some progress there. His wife helped him too. So I was really super grateful for that and uh, got to spend some time with them as well. We got to have a little bit of pizza for lunch and um, had a good time. What I'm watching on regular TV, if you were curious in, in the live chat, I am still watching The West Wing. We are halfway through season six and season seven is the last one. So we are at the stage where president of this series, um, I don't want to give you any spoilers, but anyway, there's a new election coming up. That's where we are now. So people are starting to campaign and it's kind of ironic because we are also, of course, coming up on um, the Republican National Convention, which will air this week. And then also uh, the Democratic National Convention will air soon. And I don't know about you, but I am loving the West Wing and I am not loving the real life <laughs> political campaigning. And yeah, I'm just, it's just not my favorite time. I'm also watching The Bear. We're on season three of The Bear, as a lot of people are. We are not rushing through that. The Bear, if you haven't watched it, is a story about a restaurateur who returns to Chicago. I love that it's set in Chicago. And he uses all of his skills and culinary award-winning um, things. And he brings all of that into this restaurant that his family has owned for a really long time, but he changes it up from a, a, a restaurant that just sold beef sandwiches to, uh, and, and probably, you know, drinks and whatever to a, a fancy restaurant to a really well-established uh, place. I love this show and it is very, it makes me very tense at times because the family fights a lot. There's just a lot of yelling. Sometimes there's a lot of back and forth and it's not for everybody, this, this show for sure. But, uh, and season three is getting some mixed reviews while season one and two were like, you know, spot on for a lot of people. I'm enjoying season three a lot. I'm happy that we're watching it. I don't have any, I mean, I, I, always feel a little tense by some of the things that happen. And there's sometimes I'm like, Oh, is that necessary? But you know, I mean, generally overall, I'm enjoying the bear very much. And I think that season four drops fairly soon as well, because they filmed both at the same time is what I understand. So, but nevertheless, we're watching the bear. We're also watching the summer baking championship show, uh, the seasons of that, because we love watching those to just kind of, you know, watch other people make fancy summery things. We're not doing any fancy summer baking, summer baking of our own, but we are, you know, we like watching other people do it. <laughs> and those are some of our staples for just kind of mindless TV to watch. We're also watching Will Trent. I wasn't going to start Will Trent until I looked at the Will Trent series. And then when I looked at the Will Trent series, which was written by Karen Slaughter and how many there were, and I just, I didn't see that as something I was going to prioritize <laughs> anytime soon. I didn't own it. I just, I, I just thought, no, you can't always, you can't always read it before you watch it. So I have not chosen to watch or to read the books, but I have chosen, we have chosen to watch the Will Trent series. And I think we're on season, are we still on season one of that? Maybe, but we're almost to the end of season one. And then I think there is a season two that's already dropped. 
So that one is enjoyable. It's a detective series. So we have kind of three different genres going on, just like I like to do for my books. We have The Bear, which is a drama. It says it's a comedy, but it's not. It's very dark at times. The Bear, <laughs> The Will Trent, which is detective police procedural, and The West Wing, which is a uh, political drama, I guess. And then we've watched a couple of other things recently. We watched Andrew McCarthy's documentary called The Brat. Is it called The Brat Pack or The Brats? I don't remember now. People call it different things. Anyway, it is streaming and I we really enjoyed that a lot. It was like they were just taking, he was just going back to revisit his Brat Pack partners and talk about their experience and how being called the Brat Pack was impacting them and how America took it as sort of a, you know, a fun little title. And, and, and they felt like at times that that was, they were misquoted, misunderstood and misrepresented maybe by that. But I did enjoy sort of the nostalgia and seeing them again and seeing, you know, kind of where they are and, and the reuniting that they've done. So that was fun. I think that's really about all I remember watching recently. Of course, I still watch a lot of YouTube. <laughs> I've been watching, finding some new channels now and again, some larger than others. I may do a whole separate video on that. So I'm not going to really talk about that today, but I'm also participating in Sue Jackson's big book summer. And so I am I'm watching what other people are, you know, reading or planning to read for big book summer, because that's fun, but I'm still on track for my uh, big book reads for the summer. So I have completed two so far, and I will talk about that when I do my reading wrap up. I'm also buddy reading this month, this book by Janice Hallett, The Mysterious Case of the Alperton Angels. I just started it last night. We're supposed to start it today, but I started it last night. I, from what I understand, Krista from Krista's Books and Jams is also wanting to buddy read this with us. Michelle uh, messaged me last night, so that'll be great fun. I love Krista. And uh, so, yeah, I just began. I'm not very far in at all. I think 30 some pages. I have this on Kindle as well from my library. So if I decide I want to do that rather than the physical copy of this, but this is 412 pages, I think. So this would actually count as a big book summer read, but it is definitely over 400 pages. So that one is on my stacks right now. And I started this one and realized that I wasn't going to finish it before the read a uh, buddy read that we had chosen the date we had chosen, but the tainted cut by Robert Jackson Bennett is I think different enough from the Alperton angels that I, I can make it work because it is a mystery. I think it's a little police procedurally uh, vibe, but it's also a, a fantasy world with robots, I think, and different, there's lots of fantasy here. There's a, ton of fantasy here. So I feel like it will be different enough that I can read both of them at the same time and, and really just take my time with this one. I'm having a little trouble getting centered with it so far, but this is also over 400 pages. So it would count as a big book summer read as well, but it was on my list of summer reads before I even thought about the big book summer. So I, uh, I think I'm going to enjoy this a lot. I just need to, I just need to get into the groove with this, with this world building and with these characters. And I've only so far been introduced to Denios. I don't even know how to pronounce his Denios. I don't know, but I need to figure this out. I need to listen to somebody talk about this book so I can figure it out. But he's the only character, main character so far that I've been introduced to. I have not yet been introduced to um Anna. Uh Din is what I'm going to start calling him just cuz that's easier. Way way easier. I'm listening currently to a book that I have in my Kindle library and I found it the audiobook of it because I'm behind on my net galley reads. I am trying to catch up on that plus it was one of my 12 nonfiction reads in 2024. So I'm 
prioritizing this right now. And that's called Never Far From Home by Bruce Jackson. I think I talked about this before, but I'm currently listening to that, but not every single day. And since I just finished the audiobook that I was listening to from, that I had gotten from my library, which again will be in my wrap up, I'm, I'm starting to listen to One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. I'm not far into it. It is on Everand. I think I shared with you that I found it there. And I'm trying to get into it. <laughs> I'm trying to get into it. It's, I don't know, it's a little slow, this one for me. And it may just be me because I'm having a little trouble with the Tainted Cup too, but it's just a little slower than I'm used to with my Ruth Wares. So we'll see how that goes, but that's my audio book for now. And then uh, for a fictional Kindle read, I have a couple of other options for myself that I have kind of overdone. I had to renew Miss Bor Miss Morgan's Book Brigade by Janet Skelsian Charles. I think that's how you say it because it was expiring, but it did give me the opportunity to renew it. I also had to, will have to renew The Last Murder at the End of the World. And so I think I'm just going to put that on pause because obviously I'm a little overwhelmed. Like I have too many books that came in from my library at the same time. Another one that came in on Kindle for me is Sandwich by Catherine Newman. And I feel like I might start with Sandwich on Kindle for my fictional read because it is also a family drama. I just finished a family drama. So I, and I enjoyed it. So I feel like this one might be a good fit. And my library got it, I think, because I recommended it. So I try to always read the books that they choose as a result of me putting that forward. I'm hearing some mixed reviews about Sandwich by Catherine Newman. But this was a most anticipated read for me when it first came into my purview. So I really kind of wanted to read this sooner than later because I was so excited about it. I even asked for an arc of this and I did not get it. So I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about Sandwich just based on the reviews, but I'm going to read you a brief synopsis of this. Catherine Newman is a new author to me, as is Robert Jackson Bennett. Janice Hallett is not. Uh, Janet Skelsey and Charles is not. But Catherine Newman has written a number of other books as well. But this one came out June 18th, and it is about a woman who goes away. It's a beautiful, perfect summer read goes away on a family summer vacation and it is a story of secrets lunches and learning to let go so rocky goes to their family yearly escape at cape cod and has all these memories of her experiences there with her family over i i think since childhood but she's now got some aging parents and teenagers, I think, and she's at, of a certain age in her life. And she's just really sort of noticing what's happening within her physically, emotionally, mentally, uh, just, you know, looking for, I guess, some clarity or some adjustment. I remember this very, very well in my own life when I was my, my children were starting to leave the nest, so to speak, or they were about to. I was feeling old and <laughs> like just, yeah, I was just not feeling great. Hormonally, I was probably all over the place as well. And uh, physically, I wasn't, yeah, I just wasn't at my best. So I feel like this book will either be really, really great for me to read, or it will remind me of a really challenging time in my life. I don't know, but I do definitely want to read this. And there is a, it isn't just about her angst about growing old. There is something that occurs while she's at this lake or at this summer vacation place that I guess catapults her into something that she has to make a decision about or something that's really painful. I don't know exactly. I don't want to know a whole lot. The library love fest folks who do a monthly, maybe even more often event on Facebook for new releases. If you haven't seen them before, I really highly recommend them. They are really great at sharing 
information about new releases and they, they really are great um, librarians. I actually heard about this from the library love fest. I don't always get to watch it live and that particular day though I did. And I actually went to Edelweiss right away, tried to try to get the arc and I just never got selected, but this was one of the ones that I've been anticipating for a while and it's out and it's available to me. So I'm going to hopefully prioritize that. So that way on my shelf of reading, my Kindle pick will be Sandwich by Catherine Newman. My physical copy will probably be the Alperton Angels, but also the Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. And then my audio will be for the moment, One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. And my nonfiction audio when I have a moment to get there is uh, not, not far from, never far from home. I was like, wait, that's not, it's not, not far from home. Never far from home by Bruce Jackson. And I'm also picking up the Judy Dench, reading a little bit by little bit by little bit, as we talked about. And I still have the Michelle Obama to prioritize in the next couple of months too. I might listen to that as well, because I do love listening to her voice. It's always soothing to me. And I, I really do appreciate her um, candor and her way of looking at the world. So uh, that makes me, that probably perks me up a little bit when I'm a little blue. We have five weeks left before baby's due date. And so we are starting to get ready. I'm uh, putting my phone on, you know, so I can hear it overnight now, just in case, not that there's any indication that she'll come early, but just in case I feel like now is about the time where I want to start doing that. So I have started doing that. I'm about to pack a bag for us to, in the event that we have to go and stay, you know, at night, we need different things in that bag to support us, including, you know, just snacks and water and whatever that might be. So we're going to do that so that that's ready for us to grab and go. Obviously, she's already done that. <laughs> um, she's very, very well prepared. We have somebody set up to take care of the dogs and feed them while we're gone. Oh, I have taken time off around the due date, so I should be okay with that. But if not, I have some flexibility there. My clients are aware. Students are aware. Everybody's aware that I may need to pop out. I don't have class for three weeks of August, just the first week in August. So that will be helpful. I think that's it, but we are kind of getting close to the finish line. We've done the shower. We've done, she's, you know, got the nursery set up. We had all had a painting party and got all that done. So we're, we're pretty ready to go. We're pretty ready to welcome baby girl. We still have our foster dog, Gracie. We were going to only keep her a month because of the baby time and all of that, but we are probably going to keep her until she transports. And we think we can make this work with the sitter that we have. Here's the challenges with Gracie. Love her, love her, love her. She's super, super easy to take care of. She doesn't do anything negative, really. She's had a couple accidents in the house, but it was, there were reasons why that happened for her that were um, connected to her heartworm treatment, which is why we're trying to keep her in the same place if we can till she transports and is heartworm free. She still has to have two other treatments. She also is very scared of a lot of people. She's very, very scared of men. We've discovered I had the guys come and they actually put my, I don't know if you can see it. Let's try my crown molding. They got that installed uh, this week and they also gave us a new or made us a new fence in the backyard so that we can go out the back where we still have some property behind the fence that we put up. It's a long story. I won't go into it, but so that we can take care of our yard, our property. Nevertheless, uh, they, she was terrified of them and they were both very, very kind and slow and gentle. And they realized what they had to do. They're very obviously clearly dog owners themselves. And um, yeah, she just was terrified. Had not seen her that terrified since we gotten her. And so she ended up like almost two days just staying in the room in her cubby. She just didn't even want to get, I'd leave the cubby door open and she just wouldn't leave. So this weekend when the granddaughter came, I was a little concerned about her because, you know, and everything was fine. She was fine with Addie. She was, Addie was very gentle and quiet and slow too. And she knew exactly what to do and they were fine. So, uh, but we're going to keep her until she transports, I think, because 
I just don't want her to go through another getting to know another family and neither my partner nor I want that to happen for her. And we don't want her to, you know, be afraid. And, and also to think, why does this keep happening to me? You know, because she's already been taken to the shelter at least once. We don't know what her history is, but I would suspect it wasn't great just based on her fears and her shyness and timidness. That is that, but she will transport as soon as she's heartworm free. And that treatment, that it's a quick kill heartworm treatment. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Probably many of you are because many of you are dog lovers as I am. So that is a an intense treatment. And that made her very, very sick the first time. And I suspect she'll be sick the second and third time as well. So I wish she didn't have to have that. We were going to see if maybe they could test her first before we did the next treatments. But I don't know if that will work or not. But um, she's just adorable. And <laughs> the the only sort of, I guess, care that, re that we're required to do above normal care, I guess, is caring for her skittishness and her, 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 her fear. She doesn't even really like going outside. She only goes outside twice a day, typically. And we have to really convince her to go outside, to go to the bathroom. She will hold it and hold it and hold it. She's not wanting to do it. So something is in there and we don't really know what it is, but she gets along great with our other dogs. She gets along great with our cat. Everything is, is easy. So I think this will work, but we're going to have our dogs that are come and check her out first and get, have them get to know each other. And then I put my hand here cause she's right here next to me. And then hopefully that all works out well as, as well. So again, I think she's better with women and children than she is with men. I am in my favorite season in terms of snacks. This is watermelon season. I love watermelon. I've been eating watermelon caprese salads, which is one of my favorite things. I have been uh, eating watermelon by itself. That's been my snack a lot. I'm trying to eat more and more of it. And just because this is my, like I said, it's my favorite fruit. I think of all the fruits, it's my favorite. And you can't get it all year round. So I'm taking advantage of that as well. The other thing I'm doing, which is bookish related is I am purging some titles off my Kindle. I don't know if any of you do this, but I am noticing my Kindle library it, now that I'm focusing on what I own to read is pretty vast. And some of it, I don't even remember purchasing or acquiring or why I thought I was going to read that when I acquired it. So some of the books I have were just books that I got for work that somebody sent me to read and I didn't pay for them. And I either have read them or I looked at them and thought, no, nope, I'm probably not going to read that. So I've gotten rid of a couple of those. So I just delete them. It felt awful at first to do it. And then I thought, girl, you've got way too many books and you're not going to read all these. There were some that I got as a prime reading first read that I realized I'm not necessarily interested in anymore. And then there was a, every year there was a, I don't remember if it was Amazon or somebody else that offered it, but they offered you these like free books. Like I think there were five or six of them every time and you could download them and read them for free, obviously. And some of them I've still kept. I've looked at this and I'm not through the whole library yet. So I'm still working on this, but I've, I've kept some of them, but I've looked at some of them and thought, yeah, no, I'm probably not interested in that. And uh, so I think I just got a lot of those because they were free and they were sending them to me, you know, and, and said, do you want these? And I said, sure. And I think at the time they were about to be released. They were, so they were anticipated releases for these authors, but I am like really doing some purging now. And I've purged a couple that I had borrowed on Kindle Unlimited that I don't think I'm going to read. And I'm also considering getting rid of Kindle Unlimited because I have this whole backlist of books on Kindle Unlimited that I don't know that I'm going to pick up anytime soon. Yeah, I'm really taking a look at this and being very determined about what I'm going to read and also thinking about like when I'm off the no buy challenge, like what books is, are really books that I would want to buy and keep forever. And I'm sort of getting on the 
like defining that rather than just auto buying certain things or just, you know, bright, shiny book release day. Let me get this, that kind of thing. So, so once I finish the Kindle purge uh, and review of all the titles in my library, then I will start on the Nook purge and review of all the titles on my library. And then my partner's considering maybe reading more on Kindle as well, which she can do on her iPad, but also may, I also may be getting her a Kindle Paperwhite. I'm just thinking about it and I'm hoping it's Prime Day soon. So I'm hoping that perhaps it will be on sale even more, but we'll see. But I really like mine and she's kind of noticed it and is thinking maybe that would be something she would use. We'll see. But if you are a Kindle user and you have purged your Kindle titles, tell me how you did that and how you found that experience to be. I just, I'm just trying to declutter some stuff in my life and especially books. I think I am really about to take a look at this bunch of books and, um, and see what's meaningful to me and what's likely that I'm going to read it. in you know, in the next, however long, you know, in the next couple of years, right? Like how often am I going to read that? My, I think I'm over, I have, I am over 40 books read of my 55 gold. I am, you know, plugging along with reading very, very nicely. And I am reading some backlist stuff, but I'm also reading some, some things I bought this year and some things that I'm getting from my library that are new releases. So it's a mix, it's a mixed bag, but I'm happy with it. I'm happy with my progress. So thanks so much for watching today. Uh, let me know what you're reading. Let me know what you're um, eating drinking this summer, what it is that's really lighting you up about this season. It is hot, hot, hot here. So we're not going outside as much as we would normally, I would think, but uh, we're surviving. The air conditioning is a beautiful, wonderful thing. So thanks again. I appreciate you so much. <clears throat> thanks for your uh, comments, for your likes. I, I, I'm really grateful for my subscribers as well. And if you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you. And as always, happy reading. Bye.